everyone. Uh, welcome to MJ's uh, Miniature World. I'm MJ. And for this video, I think I'm going to do a little presentation on some of the low budget techniques uh, that I will be using to film. And I want to introduce a couple of the hardware, the cameras, and also talk very briefly about the apps uh, that I will be using uh, sort of as, a, as an experiment. Okay. Um, there's a lot of, for the filming aspect of the channel, uh, it can be challenging because there are a lot of, uh, we, we are dealing with a lot of very small subjects, right? And the miniscapes themselves in the jars, you know, provide a lot of challenges. And uh, I also have some of the underwater containers that I will be filming, and I have a, a couple of techniques that I'm working on that are very, very promising to bring better like underwater uh, videos and such. So let's uh, take a look at some of these techniques. Okay, so the first method I want to show is the old phone in a jar, and that is quite literal. And this is the basic setup. Uh, this is an older track phone that I no longer use. I'm only using the camera. So I don't mind experimenting with it. Uh, and there's Fitip is there, so I have to be careful. So basically to set up uh, that uh, phone technique, I use a scotch mounting medium, which I have in my studio. It's very, very good, and it temporarily bonds the phone to the wire, as you're going to see in uh, just a little second. Okay, and there it is. The mounting medium attaches the wire, and I use a rubber band to kind of uh, stabilize the wire a little bit, okay? So it gives me a good, a nice good angle. And as you can see, the photos taken with this technique are not bad. I mean, the phone is literally in the jar. Uh, this is actually not a photo, but a video. You can kind of see my shadow there in the background if you look really closely. From time to time, you'll see that. Okay, now uh, this allows it to be hand-free, so I'm not constantly shaking and everything is bobbing up and down. Okay, so this is a really cool method. My favorite uh, way of angling the camera, though, is horizontally because I get a much better picture. And you can see that here in this photo, the setup. And this is an example. And I mean, not bad resolution. Okay, this is the horizontal uh, phone position. So not bad. Not bad at all. And again, I'm relying on this uh, for filming Weevil Haven in upcoming videos. And again, now here I, I give a snippet of the really, you know, uh, just a greater magnification. And you lose a little bit of resolution when you do that. All right. So the next method is. The next technique is a very simple uh, over the jar foam technique uh, and basically I use an empty jar and then uh, the lid open lid of a mason jar which goes on the uh, actual uh, terrarium and then it kind of levels the phone out and I can take overhead pictures I can also film uh, here's a view of that phone uh, and this is the track phone that I'm experimenting with and uh, the resolution on this camera is not as good as my uh, Galaxy S9, but it produces some pretty good results, at least I think so. So uh, this is a technique that's very simple, and it allows, again, hands off. So this is a method that I use sometimes to uh, get, supplement uh, some of the film and take some overhead pictures of some of the smaller jars. Okay, and again, keeping my hands off the camera so I'm not shaking everything. Now, the magnifier method is another method, and I used to employ this a long time ago as well when, when I was working in, in wildlife biology. And this is just a simple uh, magnifier uh, method. I use my magnifying glass, a dowel, and uh, the magnifier glass has a hole in the handle. And then I, I use a little cable tie and some electrical tape to stabilize it. And then uh, this goes over the jars and provides a little extra magnification for the photos. 
Uh, this was when I didn't have my Galaxy S9, but I still use it. Um, it it's a cool little method, and you do have to play with it a lot because in order to focus. Uh, so that is a disadvantage of this method, but I usually hook it up to the light using the dowel, and that's the purpose of the dowel, and everything uh, still moves. And I have a little carousel, uh, that's what I use to kind of spin the jars. Uh, in this case, however, uh, it doesn't spin, it just remains in place and kind of holds the magnifier at the distance that I need. And then, of course, the phone goes right up against the magnifying glass. Uh, and again, this is a very uh, crude method, but it used to provide some magnification uh, for, uh, for me in the past. So it's a method that I employ from time to time. And, uh, you know, it's a useful method. Here you can see the uh, attachment uh, with the tape, the electrical tape uh, on the magnifier just so that uh, I can show what, what it's like. And it, it helps in a lot of ways, this little dowel. Now here's a picture with that magnifier effect. This is the underside of the head of a centipede. And this is a common soil centipede. Uh, we will talk about these guys very soon. And there you can see what I'm pointing at is the modified leg, the modified front leg that actually acts as fangs. That's right. Uh, these creatures have that adaptation. So, uh, you know, it, it takes pretty good pictures with the magnification. Here's another picture. It's a little fuzzy. Uh, had to fix the sort of distance between the magnifier and the jar, so I'm not getting the glass of the jar, but it's not too bad. The next technique involves my heavy-duty camera, and uh, this is for uh, horizontal ter uh, terrariums or vivariums that I will be experimenting soon. This is to display mostly uh, ground-dwelling critters, uh, and this technique helps as well. And this is my heavy-duty Canon um, that I have. And uh, it's been a very helpful camera. And this is a camera that I'm going to be exploring uh, a, a lot more. Now, uh, very important is I do not put the glass up against the lens. Okay, that's a no-no. There is a space there between the lens and the glass. And there you can see like a little photo of what the uh, little display on the camera uh, is showing. Okay, it's the end of the vial. So this would have some plants and, and critters, hopefully. Okay, and uh, you would see it larger because it would be full window, etc., etc. But I was experimenting with this, and uh, oh yeah, this has some very good, very good uh, possibilities. Uh, another thing, of course, uh, using uh, this is a little step stool to get the camera up. I have a little tripod on there, and this gets the phone, my Galaxy S9, at the distance and angle that I need it. Okay, and there's uh, just an example of the view uh, as I'm filming or taking photos of some uh, smaller stuff, some smaller mini-scapes. So uh, getting the phone up into a position and angle that you need it is very important. Now, this is one of my favorite methods. This is the mirror method. And this is actually attaching, angling a mirror at the top of a jar. And basically, I'm filming the image that is on the mirror. Now, I use, again, my scotch mounting medium to mount the medium, the, the mirror. And it actually allows the mirror to move a little bit so I can angle it different ways. And that's really important. Uh, here is the mirror technique again in a larger terrarium and it's this technique I really really like and you're probably going to uh, see videos with this technique. Now the underwater technique is very interesting because this is using the mirror underwater. And basically, what you're seeing here is a reflection. And you can see some coke pods swimming by. It's pretty cool. 
But this is all a reflection uh, uh, of the underwater environment. Now, what's interesting is you're actually seeing the surface of the water because of the way the mirror is angled. So uh, by fixing the angle of the mirror, I get some cool underwater pics. Now, um, this is filming right through the uh, glass of a container. Uh, this is an underwater scape, but notice all the detritus on the uh, glass and everything else. So I have to clean it. Okay, but, um, okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the phone apps that I will be using, some of the microscope apps for the phone. And uh, the first one is OTG Viewer 2, and this is for the microphone that I bought. I bought it at Amazon, very inexpensive. I will be getting something better in the future, but I wanted to experiment with this microscope. So this is the app that you get from Google Play Store. Also on Google Play Store is the Microscope Magnifier Camera app from Katep. Okay, and I just started experimenting with this, and you can see uh, the little window that shows how the app looks like on your phone. And it's not a bad app. It has zoom function, uh, camera function, a recording function for video. So not bad. Uh, very similar to it is the Microscope Zoom app by Zaki. And this is also a good app, and I'm, I'm liking how the resolution, I'm also liking uh, some of the functions. It's a very basic, a very beginner app. And uh, it also has a built-in light, which helps. Now I'm going to say a little something about the hardware I'm using. Uh, the first thing is the microscope. Now this I bought uh, at Amazon. It was like $24.99, very inexpensive. It's an experiment. So this one's hard to focus, but it is very interesting. It does take some pretty good pics. Now uh, you will need the OTG Viewer 2 app from Google Play Store. You just uh, search for OTG viewers, and these are endoscope viewers, and uh, you'll see this kind of display, and this is the OTG viewer. That works very well with that microscope, okay? And so it has basic functions. You cannot focus from the app, though. But here's an example picture of a shamrock. Uh, this is the leaf of a shamrock with some stalks in the background. And I'm playing around with the light here. Here it's very bright. Uh, but then I lower the uh, brightness and the contrast a little bit. And it works, you know, pretty good. It's not, it's a very inexpensive uh, camera. So, it, you know, it's not too bad. And it will give some cool pics. Now, this is my eMeet um, webcam. And I have found apps uh, where I can plug the uh, camera to my phone and use it from my phone rather than from my computer. Okay, now in order to do this, I use the adapter from the microscope in order to be able to plug it into my phone. But this camera gives me a lot of versatility. It's not the best in terms of resolution because it's not made for the things that I'm using it for. But it does give some pretty cool background photos and the cool thing is that I can mount it anywhere because of the arms. It's nice and lightweight, okay? And uh, this is a picture of the isopod realm. So again, it's a good little backup camera. It's not going to be used uh, in any like extensive way because again, it doesn't have the zoom functions that I need. Uh, but here is my Galaxy S9 and uh, the Galaxy S9, I love it. <laughs> okay, it's a great camera and that is my primary camera for both channels okay for this channel and for my gaming channel as well so uh yeah but look at that little isopod i mean it's just a wonderful camera now for this camera i do have to open the lids many time of my uh terrariums and that can be challenging sometimes but i have techniques for that all right, folks. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that is going to lay the groundwork for the channel, and I will have future videos on this topic uh, as I learn more and more and as I try new things, especially underwater. I am determined to get some uh, underwater uh, photography going. Now, I do have some experience with underwater photography when I was 
working uh, in the ecological field. I used to do a lot of snorkeling, and that was one of my favorite things. I had a bag for my camera, a special underwater bag that you can take and kind of uh, take pictures. And I am not a professional uh, photographer by any means. I don't have any formal uh, education with photography and filming. So basically, I'm just learning. Uh, the experience that I have is basically amateur photography in the past, uh, during uh, my years in biology. I do have some experience with microscope photography because I was involved in a project in a laboratory where we took uh, micro photography of all the critters that we were identifying for taxonomic purposes. And, um, you know, just like uh, random things like that in my past. So I'm learning a lot. And basically what I'm doing in this video is just showing, basically using my imagination and coming up with ways to film these little jars, okay? So that we can have some interesting experiences, make some interesting stories with these little terrariums, all right? All right, folks. Well, I hope, again, I hope you enjoyed it. We will see more content like this in the future. Please like and subscribe. That is the only way that you can help this channel grow if you're interested in this topic, okay? And I will have a variety of to topics to organisms, to the terrariums, to everything, uh, and hopefully we can make it fun. And that's it. We can see some interesting critters through those cameras. All right, folks, we'll talk very soon. See you in the next video. Bye now.